Hi, welcome to Blue Book's Week in Review. As always, I'm joined by Pamela Riemann Schneider. And Pamela is on site at the Big Organic Produce Summit. Uh, yes, big is the word. It is the biggest they've had to date. I don't have any final numbers, but based on, and, and listen, this is not news that it's crowded in here and there's two ballrooms of crowdedness. The news is that this is the most people they've crammed in these two ballrooms uh for this and we are well into the expo day and i am still teasing me all the way through this thing um it's ridiculous but awesome so what's uh you picked up anything news products news that's the thing that's been crazy is that normally when you go to one of these shows it's like just check it off i'm i'm here Looking around, there have been several new products that I haven't seen before. A lot of new product launches, uh, new company branding launch. Uh, Penrose Farms has a, a Rowdy Rabbit is their new brand. They, they collaborate with Salubrily Brothers, um, and they have some new products, a new label, a whole new launch. And it was kind of a buzz last night because they were a sponsor for something, and everyone's like, who is this Rowdy Rabbit? Um, so that was exciting. And even as I'm walking through here, I thought maybe I would see some new packs. Um, and, you know, whether we're talking about shelf life or um, talking about reducing plastic, but actually I'm seeing new products. So that's that's pretty exciting. Um, so a lot of fun stuff. I went on a field tour yesterday and saw some automation. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. And then also this morning, the educational sessions, um, talking about CEA and the future of CEA and some of the issues that CEA is having. And I, I heard that you, you've you been covering that as well back in the office. We do have a CEA story, actually two from one of our longtime newsmakers in, uh, in App Harvest. They, they are promoting their CEO or COO to CEO, and we have a press release on that. And then also there was a uh, what's called a form 10k filing with the the sec that showed that uh the owners of the brea greenhouse which is master nardi is uh is filing this thing to evict app harvest from that greenhouse for our fail failure to live up to some of the things in the lease and i've been communicating with app harvest yeah. people and they've been saying um they acknowledge it. They might miss a payment or two, but they intend to stay there and fulfill everything. They're still growing product. Um, it's, it's you know, anytime you, you get eviction and termination and SEC notices, I don't think that's really a good thing. But I don't think it's really a good thing. Through a little bit of this before. You wrote the story last month about some of the trouble they had. Yeah, and actually during the CEA panel, um, they were talking about some of the realities where we go from here. And uh, one of the things that I can remember about this is that um, they talked about the dangers of being uh, venture capital funded and private equity funded is that they're only going to be okay with the burn through for so long. And, you know, App Harvest is one of the ones that is notorious for burning through all of its cash and they're going to be out of money sooner than expected so they need to get a product out there so it sounds like they say that we've got a product and they're selling products um but is it enough to cover what they need to be covering before all of the all the bills come due who knows um i i'm not sure that it is going to be but we'll have to watch yeah that is still to be determined and you had some robot news. I had some robot news. I got to see one of the coolest things. I got to, there's so many heck looking guys here. I got to see a uh, robot broccoli harvester. Um, and I have some thoughts on it. It is giant. It looks it looks like a like a fire truck on steroids going through a field. But it has amazing potential for reducing one of the hardest jobs out there. And then you've got one from Chipotle, another hard right. job. Yeah, Chipotle unveiled a the, the avocado, which is a uh, it looks kind of like an oven that you put avocados in and you close the drawer and it peels and cores all the avocados. So it basically cuts down the majority of the process of making guacamole. And it they can do up to twenty five pounds of avocados at a time, 
and uh, they still make the avocado, the uh, the guacamole by hand, but they're not spending all their time cutting the avocados. It's it's pretty cool, and uh, I think we had a link to the video that shows it. It's uh, it's it wasn't YouTube, so we couldn't embed it, so people got to click through to see it. But uh, yeah, pretty snazzy. I wonder how I wonder how quickly those will get into actual restaurants. If they can prove the concept, then I'm sure that it's something that will be very quickly. If they can get an automated broccoli harvester, and the, the, I heard they, they also showed the Carbon Robotics Laser Weeder, which has been all over the news. I saw it last year, one of my most uh, engaging TikTok videos. But uh, they they were saying that they're delivering one of those a week in the Salinas Valley. Uh, so that technology is moving fast. Um, so if they're moving something like that fast, if they can come up with the labor savings on something as important as avocados, I'm sure that it can move fast. Well, I think you ought to get back to there and uh, to talk to some people before. Well, maybe buyers are starting to wander off now and you might actually get to talk to Booth a little easier. Maybe, maybe. Um, but I did have one update and I've actually been asked about the update to the cherry saga. Did I ever get my cherries? Um, yes, I did. My family ate them because they got them after I already left my trip. So I just stopped by the Stimel booth and got some more. <laughs> so yeah, the cherries showed up. It was awesome, but it was too late for me and my boys enjoyed them and we'll figure out something to do with that awesome wood box. It's Maybe. like five pounds of cherries. They can't eat them all before you get home, can they? Uh, you want to make a bet? I'm sure they could. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for the Produce Reporter Weekend Review. If you are not getting the Produce Reporter newsletter, you need to go to produceweekbook.com and sign up.